We've seen that markets maximize social surplus by producing the equilibrium quantity at the intersection of demand and supply. That's because the demand curve represents the marginal benefits for consumers and the supply curve represents the marginal costs for firms. So for the first unit that's produced, the marginal cost is larger than the marginal benefit and so a social surplus is produced. The same for the second unit and the third unit all the way up to that intersection. If we were to produce beyond that intersection, the marginal cost would lie above the marginal benefit and the additional surplus we would incur would be negative. So we maximize that positive area by producing at that intersection. And of course markets are guided to that intersection through market prices that coordinate the behavior of households and firms. We've also seen that when we interfere with that price signal through distortionary policies like taxes and subsidies or price regulations, we incur deadweight losses because the market is then moved away from producing at that socially optimal quantity. But all of that is true only to the extent that all the costs and benefits are captured by market participants. When that's not the case, we're going to say that externalities arise. So externalities arise whenever there are costs or benefits in markets that are not captured by market participants. The market participants are the households that form this demand curve and the firms that form the supply curve. And so far we've assumed that all the benefits and costs to society are captured in those two curves. But suppose, for example, that there's a production process that the firms use that creates pollution which is harmful to people who breathe the air. In that case, there are non-market participants, people who are not buying or selling in that market, who are incurring costs from the pollution. So in addition to the marginal costs that firms incur, there are costs imposed on other people. And to find the social marginal cost curve now, we have to add those costs that are incurred by other people to the costs that are incurred by firms. So for the first unit, the firms will incur some marginal cost, but there will be an additional cost that others incur through the pollution that's produced. The same is true for the second unit and the third unit and so forth. And so we get a social marginal cost curve that lies above the supply curve because there are non-market participants who are incurring costs. Where would the socially optimal quantity lie now? Well, let's unclutter this picture a little bit and just draw the demand curve, the social marginal benefit curve in this case, and the social marginal cost curve The first good that's being produced is creating more benefits than it's creating costs. So we're creating a surplus by producing that first good. Same for the second good and the third good all the way up to this intersection. But once we cross that intersection, the social marginal cost that includes the pollution costs to people outside the market lies above the social marginal benefit captured in the demand curve. So we would now incur positive benefits all the way up to this intersection and then negative marginal social benefits beyond that intersection. But we know from the upper picture that the market is going to produce where demand intersects supply. So the market is going to produce this quantity. The market therefore captures all that positive social gain by producing these quantities but it also dips into that negative area which creates a deadweight loss. We can also see that deadweight loss up here. It's this triangle. In other words, when we have this kind of externality, which we call 
a negative externality, then markets produce too much. By too much, we mean beyond the socially optimal quantity. We can also think of positive externalities. So positive externalities occur when there are benefits created for non-market participants. Think about the art market, for example. There are households who buy art. They form the demand curve. And then there are artists who form the supply curve. But it may be the case that there are others who get to appreciate that art, non-market participants who didn't buy or sell in that market. In that case, there are additional social benefits, benefits in addition to those that are captured in the demand curve. So the first piece of art might create a particular level of marginal benefit for the household who buys it, but then others get to view that who also get a benefit, and we have to add that to the private marginal benefit curve from the households who purchase the pieces of art. And that'll happen for every piece of art that's created. So we get a social marginal benefit curve that lies above the demand curve. Now, where would the optimal quantity lie now? So again, let's unclutter this. And let's put the supply curve in. That supply curve still measures the social marginal cost. But instead of both the supply and the social marginal benefit curve, let's just put the social marginal benefit curve in. The first piece of art creates this much in social marginal costs and a lot of social marginal benefit. So we get a surplus from that first good and the second good and so on, all the way up to this intersection. So all of that is positive social surplus. If we were to produce beyond that, then the marginal cost would be larger than the social marginal benefit, and so we would get negative additional surplus by producing beyond this point. But we see that the market produces where demand intersects supply. If we bring that down, we see that the market captures all of that positive social surplus up to this point, but then it stops and it doesn't capture this additional positive area that could have been captured if we had produced more. So there's a deadweight loss that emerges here. Markets produce too little relative to the socially optimal quantity when there's a positive externality. And we can see that deadweight loss triangle in this picture as well. So when there are costs or benefits that are incurred by people outside of the market, we say that there are externalities. Those can be negative or positive. In one case, markets will end up producing too much, creating a deadweight loss. In the other case, markets produce too little, creating another type of deadweight loss.